Hello, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, I'm SIU beat writer Todd Hefferman. I'm with sports editor Les Winkler, and we're here just to talk about uh, the future of the SIU men's basketball program, which is entering the State Farm uh, Missouri Valley Conference Tournament Thursday night against Illinois State. Uh, how do you like their chances out there, uh, Les? I don't. Um, I think they can beat. I think they can beat any Illinois State, but they're going to have a very hard time with uh, Missouri State, I believe, is who they would play then, the, the first seed. Um, I can I can see the Slookies given the Friday this year, but I don't see any way possible that they can beat Missouri State on a neutral floor. I just, I just, I just don't see that happening. Um, that's That falls almost into the miracle category after the way they've been playing for the last two months. Yeah, they've lost a lot of games by double figures. Uh, Illinois State, I think, were two, two, two games within five points. They... They, they fought very very well up at normal where they usually don't play very well and ended up losing. Uh, and then this game, game here, was very tight too towards the end. Uh, and there certainly is a little bit of payback there because the Illinois State was 0-11 when, uh, when they did beat SIU up in normal. Uh, and it's, it's a tournament time and SIU has dropped three straight tournament games. Uh, and their big problem right now is rebounding, and Illinois State has a tremendous rebounder in Tony Lewis who really tore them up. And they just, there's just no consistency even from possession to possession. I mean, you, in, order, in, order to, in order to compete in a tournament, you have to be very consistent in your play, very consistent in your approach. And the team has not had that. They don't have it now. They haven't had it all year. And that is one of the primary problems that I see with this program, not, even, not just this year, but the past two years. And, and how much do you think that has been the turnover? Of, of players and not necessarily coaches. I think they've had the same coaches the last two years, but how much do you think that's hurt their, their consistency? I think that is a part of it, but I also don't think that they brought in, I don't think the players here have been able to grasp the system or they just, it just hasn't been, I don't know if it hasn't been taught. I don't know. It's not within these guys, but there just is no the consistency that you need. I mean, like I said, it's it's gotten to the point where it used to be they wouldn't play consistent for a game and then a half, and now it's almost from possession to possession. It's almost like when they're playing well, you can almost in the back of when there's when there's a stop in the action, it's almost like, oh wow, what were we doing? And then when they come back out on the floor, they can't recapture that. It's almost like they start thinking about what they're doing, and it just. It just hasn't worked for whatever reason. It's so it's so bad. It's almost like from media timeout to media timeout is how badly. It exactly. Is. That's that's what I'm saying. And and then which brings us to the topic of this conversation is what happens after the Missouri Valley Conference. And I it, it seems to me like Southern Illinois has turned into a quilting bee the last the last three weeks. That's all anybody's talking about is. I mean, we've we've got we've got unrest in the Middle East. We've got gas going to four dollars a gallon, and people are talking about the future of Saluki basketball. That's that's just captured the imagination of people. And I don't know. I, I think we have a little bit different ideas of what's going to happen. Uh, a lot of people are saying that Chris is going to be gone for sure. I'm not certain. I, I'm not certain that that's the road they're going to go for a number of reasons. One of which is the finances, because that is a very sticky issue. And second of all. Um, it's not a quick fix, but I think some people no, think it not. will. That some people think it will be. Changing the coaches will ultimately change the program. There's no question about that. But whether or not it will happen very quickly, and whether it will go in a positive direction, is a great unknown. I mean, Quanzo Martin turned Missouri State around in three quick years, but you know there have been there have been many coaches in many places where, where the turnover continues, and, and you know they don't get the program turned around. So. There's a lot of variables at work here. I'm not convinced that Chris is going to go. I think maybe you feel differently. Well, well, I don't know if I necessarily say if I think he's going to go or not. But, I, but what my question is is uh, what the what the question the university is with is are they at the point now? Or are they better off starting over? Or are they better off sticking with with Coach Lowry and his contract, 2.25 million dollars plus it will take to buy out his contract. There is there is no buyout less than that unless Chris Lowry agrees to it. And that, that's, a financial, that's a financial hurdle when your athletic budget is only $12 million, when you have a lot of problems with the university as far as their appropriations from the state, from the government, 
uh, furloughs, layoffs, a bunch of problems with the university. So the, the university is going to have a hard time contributing to any part of that buyout if that's the way the athletic department decides to go with. That's a fact. Now, the other basketball-wise, Chris is an alum. Chris has had three straight 20-win seasons before 2007. Since then, he's 58 and 66. He's had problems with players breaking the law, with players, you know, just turning turning their back on him basically. And not all of that is his fault, but he is the head coach, and it all falls to him. And and the question is, do, are they at the point now where they are better off starting off with somebody new, maybe re-energizing the fan base? Because let's let's face it. It's not only a business for men's basketball, it is a business for SIU's complete athletic department. And when the attendance is less than 3,500 for an entire year, it was actually 4,080, I believe, for this year. That is the lowest in over a decade. That money, plus you're talking about will season ticket holders come back next year, that all factors in. I mean, we love to talk, it's just about basketball, and it's about kids graduating. And, and to Chris's credit, kids are graduating. He does have a high APR, and that's not a lot of things that coaches look at first. but you got to look at all those factors, and you know, right now it's just in a downturn, and he is not endearing himself to anybody right now. I, you had two key factors that I see. Um, the, the turnover of players has been huge. Um, when SIU was successful and was making their runs to the to the NCAA tournament, they did it with mature, older players who had been around, been through the program, they understood the system, and uh, they were the Florida U type of players. And that, that constant turnover has has added to the turmoil. There's no question about that. Plus, SIU is a chronic chronic young team. I mean, they're they're always going out there with with a very with with kids with two or three. I think what this year there were ten years of experience on the entire roster, mm -hmm. Division One experience. In, in past years, they would go out there with 25 or 30 years. There'd be that much deep experience on. And, and the other thing that the other thing that you hit on is um, um, the, the dis disenchantment of the fans. I mean, I don't think there's any question that after um, after the Illinois State loss, after um, Indiana State, after Evansville, that stretch in there, fans who were just SIU fans, not necessarily the jump on the bandwagon, they have to win at all costs right now fans, suddenly became very disenchanted and beyond disenchanted, angry. And that that may actually be, if if there is a change in coaches made, that may actually be the impetus to make the move, just the fact that, as you mentioned, who's going to be here next year in the stands. So mm -hmm. it's, it's a very complicated issue. It's a lot more complicated than wins and losses and, and so and and that's why and that's why when you factor in all those, that's why I'm not certain that that is going to happen. Mm -hmm. And I'm not beyond that. I'm not sure that that is what needs to happen. It's but I'm but I'm confused right now. <laughs> yeah, and it is. There's there's so many factors involved and and so many factors that we don't know about that we do know about, but that that just wins and losses obviously would solve a lot of them. Would solve almost all of them. And and this is. This will be his worst record as a head coach if they lose on Thursday. They'd be 12 and 19. Uh, they would be missing the postseason, uh, which is you know kind of the impetus of why they signed him to that contract. Because you look at $750,000 and I'm like, wow, my God, how big is that? Well, when you when you factor in him making the tournament six straight years and him making it, you know, you got to guess he's gonna probably gonna make it once every three years, four years. It'll almost pay for itself. It, it, it almost pays for itself. Just how, that's how <clears> different. <throat> making the NCAA tournament is and not making it. And it's a factor financially for the whole athletic department, not just basketball. But, you know, you just talk about, and what you were talking about, older players. Everybody has older players in SIU. And it's been like that the last two years. And you just hope that you build, build slowly, but you can't build if everybody's leaving after their sophomore year. And you have to stick somebody new and, and to play that role. A, a two-year player, no matter how great he is, even Booker Woodfox was not better than, you know, maybe even Carlton Fay as a fourth-year player. You can't replace a fourth-year player, fourth-year, fifth-year senior in the same system for five years. And the the other side of that that we haven't mentioned yet is what's going to happen to the players on the roster if they make a change. What's going to happen to a promising recruiting class coming in next year? I mean, th I, those are those are all things. I mean, you know, I, I'm glad it's not me making the decision. I, I really, I, a lot of people I think out there are, are angry and they're oversimplifying the issue. And, 
it's you know it's an emotional thing, and I understand that people want the te- want the team to win. But uh, I, I and Mario's quote in your story today, which I, I I thought was very revealing, quote was that you have to take an unemotional look at it, and I think that's I think that's the difference between being a fan and being in this business, because it is a business, and if you're in business, you don't make decisions based on emotion, you make them based on data, cold hard facts, and I think that's what they're going to have to do and. Uh, I can see the decision going either way at this point. Yeah, that's and that's the thing. Like a lot of people have made up their own mind what they want, what they think the program needs. But you can you can make a case for both sides. You I really I think, can. I think so too. So uh, <laughs> have we confused you as much as we've confused ourselves? <laughs> yeah. So so email us your questions if you have any. But uh, stay tuned to the Southern Illinois and the Southern dot com for the latest news. And uh, we're starting Thursday night. We'll have a live blog from the game. It's at 6.05 uh, at the Scott Trade Center in St. Louis, and uh, thanks for watching.